PCB Foundations, by Paul Taubman, and Sean Kelly. Presented by 9.connects. Chapter 9. Intelligent Data. 9.1. Introduction. Up to this point, we have mostly discussed the symbolic graphical representation of the component, however, it is useless if it does not represent a real-world component. Though this was discussed in the assembly chapter, and will be repeated in a later chapter regarding assembly documentation, this cannot be overemphasized, most projects will crash and burn at assembly due to a bad bill of materials. Most of this can be avoided when a component has intelligent data in a consistent form with other components in the library. 9.2. Intelligent Data Intelligent data consists of the textual information that describes a component. It serves two purposes. 1. It allows the designer to search the library for components of interest. Even the name of the component can be considered part of this intelligent data. 2. It allows for the creation of the bill of materials as the schematic is being designed. If the intelligent data is consistent in the components, the schematic editor can collect this data into a spreadsheet for purchasing. The mark of a good library is when the bill of materials is ready to go upon the completion of the schematics. Depending on the EDA tool being used, intelligent information is commonly referred to as parameters, metadata, attributes, or variables. Note, for this discussion, the term parameters will be used. Regardless of the term, they are all defined as name equals value. As simple as this sounds, there are many ways this can be entered incorrectly. The two most prevalent issues that are problematic for the designer are not knowing what information to add, and the formatting of information. The following example was mentioned earlier in the book, but it's worth repeating here when discussing intelligent data. Let's assume that we have some savvy designers who really want an automated bill of materials, and make a concerted effort to add the manufacturer's name and part number to each symbol that they create. They have added these components to a common library that everyone can access, and these components are placed in a design. When the bill of materials is created, a nasty surprise awaits. Each designer used a different name for the manufacturers. Unfortunately, the tools are not smart enough to know that all these ways of writing manufacturer mean the same thing. Therefore, it created a column for each name. Even if the parameter names were corrected so that all of them fall under one column, the values assigned are different. In this example, some used the abbreviations for the manufacturer's name, while others spelled it out. This may not seem like a big issue, however, one of the key features of a good library is the ability to sort components based on the information found in the intelligent data. If the data is not consistent, the search slash filter function is compromised. Therefore, the intelligent data requires more than just declaring a name and value, it needs to have consistency. It must be consistent so that the information will fall under the appropriate column within the bill of materials, and the value needs to have guidelines or formats so that the information can be successfully sorted and or filtered. 9.3. Key Parameters A question that may have come to mind is, what information do I need? There is only a half dozen or so key pieces of information that are necessary. 1. Datasheet. The datasheet is the proof of existence for a component. The component should have a link or reference to its datasheet. 2. Manufacturer's name and manufacturer's part number. The manufacturer's name and part number are vital intelligent data parameters. Though the name and part number go together, they are represented as separate parameters, each with a name and a value. 3. Description. The description field summarizes the component in one single parameter. If a bill of materials is uploaded into a purchasing or accounting database, the only way one could quickly obtain the component's essence, for example, voltage, tolerance, value, footprint, component type, etc., would be this description. Any other data in the record, like manufacturer's name and part number, would require a search or the need to piece information together. Even if there was a link to a datasheet, 
one would still have to open the datasheet to obtain the essence of the component. It is strongly suggested that a method of writing consistent descriptions is to be documented and used for each component type, resistors, capacitors, diodes, ICs, etc. Each component type has characteristics that are not necessarily important to other component types, thus, an all-purpose description format could be problematic. As for a description format for a given component type, it is better to list characteristics in order of general first and then specifics. For example, a common resistor that is rated for high power could state, Res 0805, 100 ohm, 1% high power. 4. Company Part Number Many companies use a purchasing database system. When the designer presents their bill of materials to the purchaser, each component is issued a unique ID, also known as a company part number. This is a requirement of all databases. Most companies handle this by issuing a unique company part number. The number itself does not require any indications or hints of the component that has been assigned to it. Most companies typically use the next available number. Some believe that the manufacturer's part number can serve as the key field. This is not advised, because at some point, there may be two manufacturers with the same part number. Woe be to you if you paint yourself into this corner. In addition, it is not uncommon for the manufacturer to change part numbers. This is especially true if there was a merger, or if they change the process of making a certain component. 5. Component Characteristics The information provided thus far is valuable for the bill of materials. To aid the designer in searching components in a library, Additional information about the parts can be provided, such as the value, tolerance, and even the footprint type. These characteristics should be limited to key features of the components. A common mistake by those who are maintaining a component library, is to obtain all the parameters of a component type. Unfortunately, this is a lot of effort with diminishing returns. The key parameters of a component type are adequate for search purposes within the library. Once a component has been located, the designer can open the datasheet for more information. 9.4. Chapter Summary A good symbol not only has a good graphical representation, but it also contains the intelligent information necessary for searching the component, and more importantly, the ability to assemble a good bill of materials. Attention to this aspect of the symbol will guard against many of the costly issues that arise during assembly.